In this video, I'm walking you through how to do sitting elbow curls, and I'm going to show you how to do sitting elbow curls either with a yoga block in between your knees or a strap around your knees. So if this is the first time that you're trying this, then please do grab a chair to sit on, but also a yoga block like so, and a yoga strap as well. You'll find that one of these implements will probably suit your body better than the other one. So one way around will feel a little bit more effective, like there's a bit more work going on and hopefully change occurring as well. So first things first is you're going to sit on a firm chair or surface that is going to keep your thighs parallel with the floor. So you don't want to be sat on a bed or a sofa because you're going to be wobbling around and your pelvis isn't going to be still and level, which is really important with this exercise. And the height of the thing that you're sat on is important because from the side, we want our thighs to be parallel with the ground, not too high and not too low, okay? So we're looking for 90 degree angles. I'm gonna show you this exercise side on as well, but I'm just gonna show you in the front view to start with. Can you see here how I have the middle of my toes, the middle of my ankles, the middle of my knees, and the middle of my hips all in alignment? This is going to be helped when I put the block and the strap around my knees or in my knees, but it's the feet that you need to consider and focus on the most. Most people, because they splay out through their feet so much, They'll put themselves into position and the toes, to a certain degree, are going to be pointing out to the side. What I want you to do is keep your ankles in line with the hips and pivot those toes in so that the outside edge of the feet are actually what you're looking at as parallel. We're not using the big toes because that will always make the feet turn out to the side slightly. We're spinning those feet in. It's the outside edge of our feet that we want to have parallel. And the second and the third toe is in alignment with my ankle, in alignment with my hip, sorry, my knee, and in alignment with my hip. So this is what I look like from the front view. As I said, I'm gonna show you this side on as well. If you're using a yoga block, you're gonna put it what I call the medium way around, in between your knees, and you'll see that it's keeping your knees at hip width distance apart. That's too wide. My legs there are out in sort of abduction and external rotation, and that's a little bit too narrow, but actually it's only a tiny bit too narrow. This is what I want. I'm keeping a nice gentle hold on that block throughout as we do the exercise, which is an upper body exercise. My pelvis rolls forwards. I'll show you that in the side view. That's gonna help my hips wake up even more than they will be from the block being squeezed and the feet are just staying on the floor like so. I'm doing a golfer's grip. So golfer's grip is a funny hand position. It's not a fist, so you're not rounded through your hands. You are straight up until the first knuckle on both of your hands. You're tucking your fingers into your hands and you're keeping your thumbs firm and extended, okay? you will notice that your hands want to get floppy, you want to lose momentum through your thumbs and fingers, you've really got to make sure that the fingers are super, super tight and everything is very rigid around your hands. You're sort of locking out the exercise at your hands. We don't want them to be floppy so that you lose momentum. As I said, I'm going to show you this side on when I do the exercise, but we're going to draw our fingers to our temples thumbs facing downwards, and we're making sure that we're really keeping those fingers as firm and as active as they can be. As we go through the exercise that we're about to do, one of the things I want you to watch out for is that your wrists don't bend. So this is a shoulder function exercise, but lots of people's shoulders are super locked up. If your shoulders can't do the movement that we're gonna try and do today, what you might notice that you're doing is cracking your wrists and leading with your wrists so that they move at like a different cadence, a different tempo to what your shoulders are doing. You've got to lock that wrist out. Imagine that your arm is a door and the door is hinging at the shoulder. It's not hinging at the wrist, okay? Doesn't matter if your elbows don't touch and it doesn't matter how far back they go. What matters is that it's your shoulder that's driving the movement, not your wrist. So don't let the wrists cheat because you're never going to improve your shoulder function. 
if the risks are cheating. You've just got to put the ego to one side and make sure that it's these guys that are driving what should be a shoulder movement. So fingers on temples, thumbs facing down, hands really rigid. This is what the movement looks like. You might not be moving anywhere near like this, so you might sort of be in this sort of territory before you notice that your wrists want to bend, and that's absolutely fine. Um, of course, as ever, we're staying within a pain-free range of movement as well. So we're gonna be moving those arms nice and slowly like so. We're getting the shoulders moving, scapula gliding, the arms are rotating, that type of thing. One of the things, another thing that we are thinking of here, and one of the reasons why I'm showing you this in the front view, is as we take those hands up, if your hands and shoulders, sorry, if your arms and shoulders lack an independence of movement, what you might notice is that your shoulders go up by your ears. And this will be a recipe for you to get tense in your neck because your traps are overworking because you're lacking function through your arms and your shoulders. So you taking your hands up shouldn't mean that your shoulders move up. So before we take our shoulders, sorry, before we take our arms up, we're going to roll our shoulders back and down behind us and really try and keep those shoulders actually as low as we can. And then keeping the shoulders pulling, pushing down using the muscles of the mid back, we raise our hands so that this is different to this. We've really got to get the shoulders away from the ears, otherwise our neck will take over and possibly start hurting. So pulling the shoulders back and down, we're breathing in and out of our nose and keeping a nice consistent breath into the belly. Pelvis rolls forward, squeezing onto block. We're going to be moving like this. I'm just going to do 10 from this angle, then I'm going to show you side on, and then I'm going to bring in the strap. So I've got my weight even through both of my sit bones. I'm not putting more weight through one hip than the other. I'm moving nice and slowly. I'm keeping my breath nice and steady. I'm really trying to keep the shoulders away from the ears and I'm making sure that those fingers and my thumbs are super active and there's no bending at my wrists. So it looks like this. Now, let me show you this side on so that you can get an idea of the pelvic position and the rib cage position that we want here. So from the side, we can see that my ankles are directly underneath my knees, not too far forwards, not too far back. My pelvis rolls forward. My pelvis roll, rolling forward anteriorly is not the same as me chucking my rib cage up. So you might notice that you normally want to sit like this. I say roll your pelvis forward and what your inclination is, is to chuck your rib cage up in the air. What this is gonna do is put too much pressure in your mid to lower back and it's gonna hurt it. So we're really thinking pelvis moves over the head of the femur, the hip, and the rib cage, the sternum, faces down. That rib cage thing is important as the exercise kind of continues as well. So it's not just about that setup in the seated position. What you're watching for is that as you take your fingers to your temples, that you're not doing this. Because that's you flaring your rib cage to put your arms in position. That's not you moving your shoulders. So the rib cage stays facing forwards as the arms come up to the head. Roll that pelvis forwards, and that's going to make you feel your hips, especially if you've got the block in between when you're just giving them a squeeze. And then this is what the exercise looks like from the side. And what I want you to be kind of mindful of in the side view is that we're not doing this. So if your elbows are dipping down low and you can feel a lot of movement through your spine, sort of up and down, you're trying to use your rib cage again to create the movement. What we want is the scapula, the shoulder blades, to be gliding along the back edge of the rib cage. There's very, very little movement in the rib cage. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. Rib cage stays facing forwards. It's the shoulders that should be moving. So that's how it looks like with the block. When we use the block, it's going to help engage our adductors. It's going to help with our hip flexors, and it's just going to help promote better pelvic and hip stability and balance. The same thing goes with the strap, and I'm gonna do the strap side on first and then show you from the front, although the principles really are the same. We're gonna put the strap around our thighs, a few inches above the knee. We're putting the strap in such a way that when we squeeze out against it continually, 
that we're not allowing those knees to go wider than hip distance apart. So I spoke about that before, and the block stops your knees from kind of going anywhere. With the strap, you've got to make sure that your strap is set up tight enough that your kneecaps are in alignment with your hip joints. Everything else for the alignment through your legs is the same. So we've got that 90 degree angle ankle, knee and hip. The pelvis rolls forwards, which is not the same as rib cage flaring up. And the exercise is exactly the same, but it's just if you're choosing to use the strap, you're maintaining a continuous squeeze outwards on that strap. Fingers are locked, thumbs are locked, wrists are locked, hinge point is the shoulder, not the hand just getting floppy and losing momentum. We're not hinging at the rib cage either. We're keeping the rib cage down so it is indeed the shoulder blades that need to move. Neck stays relaxed, breathing stays relaxed. I'll quickly show you this from the front view and then we are done with our walkthrough for uh, sitting elbow curls. So like this, see here, I've got the strap, I'm squeezing out and my knees are staying in alignment with my hips. Pelvis rolls forward, hands are nice and tight, pulling those shoulders back and down, really trying to get the shoulders away from my ears. Shoulders do not lift as my arms lift. This is what it looks like. Couple more here for good measure. And that is sitting elbow curls with both a block and a strap. You actually don't need to use either, but I would recommend if you're doing the sitting version of this to use one or the other because it will just help keep your legs in better alignment and that means you're gonna get more work uh, and stability happening through your hips and pelvis. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.